Hello, I'm Audrey, and in this uh, Friday Functions video, we're going to talk about three different functions, the split, the substring, and the index of. We're going to start with split, and split requires two parameters, a text parameter and then a separator. And what it will do is it will split the string that we provided in the text parameter using the separator as the delimiter. Then we're going to talk about substring. And in substring, we're going to pass a text, a start index, so we're counting the letters to a certain point, which is the start index, and then we're going to say how many characters we'd like to have counting from that start index. So it returns a subset of characters from a string. And then finally, we have index of, which is only two parameters like split. It is the text and then what you want it to search for. And it will return the first index of a value within a string. It is not case sensitive. So it will go and look at this text. And, and if I were to say text, and then right here I put ex, then it would start two. Because it counts to see where does the text that we're looking for start is numerically, from left to right. OK, let's go see what this looks like. I'm going to use a demo by I'm going to play with my manager's job title, OK, because he's got a pretty long job title. So let's go back to flow. I got started by adding a trigger, which was just a button. And now I'm going to add a um, Office 365 users connector action, action here. And this is so that I can get to the manager. All right. So you can get to anybody's manager just by using the Office 365 users connection and then the action get manager v2. Now, what get manager needs is somebody's email. Whoever's email I put in there, that's whose manager's information I will have. So since I have triggered this flow and button flows give me the email, I'm going to go ahead and click that email. So this email represents whoever triggers this flow email right here. And now I'm going to hit another new step and I'm going to create a variable. So I'm going to type variable and then initialize a variable. And then I'm going to call this var job title. And then I'm going to make it a string. And then I'm just going to pick the job title that's in the output of Git Manager. So in the dynamic fields, I see Git Manager. And these are all the properties that I can get back about this manager. His skills, his title, his language, his phone number, his full name, his last name, his first name, the city, his birthday. Boy, I got all Steven's information here. So I'm just going to choose job title. And we're going to play with this. So let's just make sure that our job title works. So I'm going to rename this variable for job title. And let's test this. Make sure we get Stephen's job title out of it. OK, no errors. Our variable job title is right there. Now, let's play with split. First, if we split this by the space, we'll get four different things. Principal, then PM, then director, and then flow. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create another compose. I'm going to actually do a compose. That's my first compose. So I use compose when I'm only going to need it once, and I use variable if I'm going to use it more than once. Okay. In this case, I'm only going to use this one once. So I'm going to use compose and now I'm going to look at the split, right? So again, if I scroll over here, I can say see more and I can see my split function right here and I can click on it or I can stop typing split up here. So I'm going to click on it because that's faster. And then I'm going to go to my dynamic content and I'm going to put that variable in there. And then it wants to know, so if I hit a comma, it wants to know what is the separator. Notice separator's bowl, because that's what it's waiting for right now. This happens to be in my way. 
So I'm going to click over here and then I'm going to go to the end and get after that comma and put a single quote. And now notice it made two for me and it put my cursor right in the middle of those two quotes. I'm just going to hit my space bar to make my separator be the space. Okay. Now I'm going to say, well, first I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to say, okay. And I'm just going to put that in a comment so you can see what that is. Save. Okay. This wasn't an expression. This was just a dynamic tag. So I just renamed this. But in this case, you only see part of the dynamic tag. So I put it in a comma so you can see it. I might even rename this split. Okay. And then save that. So let's test that. Join, joins and split are opposite. So split, splits, joins, joins, right? Join, joins, right? So we'll do join another day. But now you can see what my output is of the split. I've got all four of them. So if I wanted just the first one, we could treat this as an array because it is, right? See the brackets? I want the first of this array. If I want principal to come back, then I'll edit this. I'll create another compose. And I'll use what we learned last week and use the first expression. And inside first, I'm going to put that split, right? And then say, okay, and test this. Can you determine, can you guess what we're going to get in that last one? I hope you got it right because we should get principal. Because the split, the first one in the split is principal. And we did. Bravo. Now, we could, of course, use these other indexes. We could say index one, index two, or we could say last to get each one of these. All right. So now I'm going to try substring. All right. Let's get the PM. Let's say we want just the PM. Now, I could get it from the split using the thing that we learned last week, which is the index, but I'm going to try and get it with substring. All right. So this one, I'm just going to re rename this compose job title. No, so compose first of split. Okay. But then I'm going to add another compose here and now we're going to try substring. All right. Now I'm going to tell you, I want the PM in that string right? Just the PM. So I'm going to go in here. And again, if I scroll over and hit see more, I will see substring, which needs a text, a start index and a list length. So I'm going to click on that. And now what do I want a substring of? Let's go all the way back to the variable just for fun, but we could do this in a number of ways, right? Might be fun for you to try the different ways you can do this but I'm going to select the variable, which gets me back my whole job title. Now, where is PM? It wants to know what should I start counting from? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look for PM and in Excel, I would use either a mid, right? A left or a right. In this case, we're going to use index of index of is I guess pretty much the equivalent of mid in Excel and, but it only needs two things. It needs a string. And then what are you looking for in that string? So the string again is going to be the variable. And then what am I looking for in the string? I'm going to hit a comma and then I'm going to single quote. I'm going to look for P M. Okay. If I just put P it'll just find principal. So I'm going to put P M right. And then the last thing it wants after the index of for the substring is how many characters do you want? And I'm going to put two because I just want the PM. Now I'm going to control A to copy to select everything, control C, and then I'm going to click OK, but I'm going to paste that whole thing into the comment so that you can see it. Okay, so 
it's as if what's happening here is we have some nested stuff going on here. So the substring needs what text do you want me to look at? And that is the variable. Whatever is written in job title is should, what chat should look at. Then where do you want me to start counting from is going to be the index of, which is very similar to find in Excel or search in Excel. It's going to count from the left side of the text to the first letter of the thing you're searching for. So it wants, what do you want me to look at? Which is the job title variance. And what do you want me to find? I want you to find PM. As soon as it finds PM, that it counts up to the letter P and that's where it starts. After that, I want it to go two letters in. Now, this can get extremely nested, which means that even the length can be another function, but I think I've taken you as far as I want to take you for this week. Since we know PM is two characters, I'm just going to type two there. But I promise you that we will have plenty of chances to use substring in a lot of different ways. So look forward to that. All right, so I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to test this. What we're hoping we'll get out of that one is PM. Because it's a substring of the string it's looking at. And if we open this up, it worked out beautifully. So that's this week. So just to uh, summarize what you learned today, in addition to the functions, is you can get all the manager properties from the get manager of the user, Office 365 users. Then you can put whatever you want in that variable for job title. And now you can play with that, right? And I suggest you do. You want to try, do some splits. And then after you split it, right, look at your little array and do first. Try getting one of the index numbers. Try kind of playing around with what you end up with split to get different things. We got the first of the split, which gave us principal. Then try using substring to get just PM. All right. And in substring, right, we had to tell it, what are you looking at? And so it was looking at the variable. Actually, we used the variable instead of the array. We used the whole variable for substring. And then we said, find PM. And so what it did was count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And so it did eleven to know where to start. And then we said, how many characters from that? We said two which ended up with PM. All right, so you learned quite a bit today and uh, there's one more array video coming soon, um, which will talk even more complex arrays, but uh, this has been awfully fun and I'll be talking to you soon. Those of you that are in the United States, please enjoy your holiday weekend and all of you all over the world, Please enjoy your Power Platform experience and I'll be talking to you soon.